Hey guys, this is Srini and in this tutorial, let's continue our discussion about hyperparameter tuning. In the last video, we looked at how to perform a grid search for the best parameters uh, for uh, learning rate and momentum. And in this video, let's actually look at activation functions and weight initialization and optimizers. What are the best ones? What are the best activation functions? What is the best way to initialize your weights? And what is the best one for optimizer? No one has an answer to your problem because you know it the best. So one way to find out what is the best one is to uh, go ahead and learn everything about all of these. And then uh, based on your knowledge, say this is the best one for your problem because of blah, 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 whatever that thing is. Or do it in an empirical way, which is what we're trying to do, meaning throw a whole bunch of parameters at the system and say, find the best one for me, okay? And then it'll tell you. That's exactly what we are trying to do here. And we did that in the last video and let's continue exactly the same topic. So I really, really urge you to watch the last two, three videos on this topic so you know, uh, so you have some context about what we're talking about here. So we're going to use exactly the same example of MNIST classification and quickly tweak these, uh, you know, uh, the, the hyperparameter space of activation, weight initialization and optimizer, and then find out the best one. Okay, so let's jump into the code right now. And, uh, here, like I said, we are going to work with MNIST data and all of these libraries are pretty standard. So let's go ahead and run this again, except for this one, learning rate uh, scheduler. I don't know why we have this. We are not using it. Uh, this is uh, leftover from one of our previous videos. So probably ignore that for now. And let's go ahead and run our NumPy and matplotlib. And uh, this is the important one, grid search CV. Again, this is scikit-learn model selection designed for scikit-learn models, but we are going to use a trick to convert our neural network model, Keras model, into something that scikit-learn understands. So the version of TensorFlow and uh, Keras that I'm using are 2.2 for TensorFlow and for Keras 2.4.3. Okay. Now the next step, we are going to fix the random seed because we don't want the results to change by that much be, uh, when we change different parameters because we want to compare those, okay? And we are going to import the MNIST data set, talked about it in the last video, and I don't need to plot because you know what it is. And watch my previous video if you don't know what it is. Let's go ahead and normalize the result, uh, the X values, otherwise the values are between zero to 255. And we are uh, flattening or we are actually reshaping our uh, 28 by 28 uh, pixels or 60,000 images, 28 by 28 into a uh, one dimensional vector. So if you look at variable explorer, now instead of 60,000 by 28 by 28, we have 60,000 by 784. Again, something we discussed in the last video. Now we have to convert our Y values into one hot encoded. So we are going to use two categorical so because we have a classification problem right here. And then uh, in the last video, again, we discussed about this where I said, uh, well, working with 60,000 and changing all these parameters can be very time consuming and probably unnecessary. So what if I get 6,000 uh, random ones? And the way I'm trying to do is, I know we have X-Train, so let's take that and of those, let's get 90% assigned to X do not use. We're not gonna use it, we're gonna throw it out. And uh, X grid is something uh, where we are actually uh, going to use, which is the 10%, okay? So this is, I'm just using the scikit-learns uh, import uh, train test split, which we have done in many, many videos in the past, okay? So this is where the advantage of becoming my subscriber uh, lies, right? Uh, you'll know all of these and you'll be up to date with uh, little things in here. Okay, so uh, the shape of our grid is 784 because I'm doing this because that needs to be part of my input dimensions right there. Here comes the actual model. Again, I uh, it's worth repeating from last video, right? We are defining our model as a function because this is the function that gets uh, that gets uh, supplied into the into the model later on. So uh, uh, so so this uh, scikit-learn understands exactly how to interpret it. Okay, this is the wrapper that Keras TensorFlow actually provided us. Okay, so that's why we are defining this as a function, and the parameters of the function are in this example since we are trying to span activation 
initial weights and optimizer i'm going to provide these three as inputs and predefine it to something if you don't do this and if you just put activation equals to something here it's going to throw you an error saying that the model is not complete or some weird error so this is the this is the technique since these three are the ones that we are trying to span so these are uh, provided right there and then we are building the model like normal this is exactly the same model as last time in the previous video and the one before that Okay, and uh, we have a couple of dense layers, each 64 neurons and uh, a 10% dropout in the middle. In the next video, let's actually parameterize or span multiple hyperparameters, including dropout, epochs, and all that stuff. Okay, but for now, let's just focus on this. Okay, my activation uh, in this dense layer equals to activation. Well, initially ReLU, but then we'll change it. Kernel initializer, what is that? How do you want to assign the initial weights randomly? right so in this case i'm saying okay uniform random okay so that's what the initial weights are and then we'll change this and uh, here again same thing initial weights activation and in the final layer i cannot just use any uh, activation i have to use softmax this is a multi-class classification problem if this is a binary then that would be uh, something else right uh, sigmoid basically so uh, this is fixed this is not something i'm changing right now Okay, and finally, like here, the last is categorical cross entropy. Obviously, this is a multi class uh, problem. And optimizers is optimizer. What is it? We can try Adam, we can try something else. Okay, a stochastic gradient descent and a couple. So, this is uh, my model. So, let's go ahead and run these lines. There you go. Now, uh, we are going to import Keras classifier from keras.wrappers scikit-learn so we can define or we can define our model such a way that uh, scikit-learn understands okay that's the whole point so let's import that and for batch size let's use exactly what we have done the last time and let's do 10 epochs because doing 50 epochs for all of these can take uh, quite a bit of time so let's just do 10 epochs and now my model for scikit-learn to understand is keras classifier the one that we just imported and my build function is define model which is this one okay so build function is basically what model we are trying to supply number of epochs is 100 batch size is batch size everything is pretty much the same now comes the dictionary part so what goes into this uh, grid search cv is our model which we just defined and the parameter space that we want to kind of explore as a parameter grid this is nothing but a uh, a dictionary okay so first let's start with lists what do i want to do for activation i want to do these three softmax relu and sigmoid tell me which one works best you can also try tan h and soft plus a, uh, a couple others right there i just left that in the notes uh, how do you want to initialize your weights you can use uniform, normal, HE uniform, which one works, okay? And again, a couple others that you can try uh, down here. For optimizer, do you want to use stochastic gradient descent, RMS prop, or Adam, okay? So this is the space, nine of these, that we are spanning. Uh, again, it's going to use cross-validation to actually see how the results are you know, between these and then what is the best combination, and it's going to tell us what that is. Now, I'm going to convert this list into a dictionary using the dict. Uh, command right there activation is activation initial rates and optimizer so these are the three things so let's go ahead and run them i don't think we did uh, did we do uh, no after batch size we did not run this model so let's go ahead and run all of these just to make sure okay so now we have our parameter grid and uh, if you want to see this is how it looks like a grid uh, a dictionary of three lists that's pretty much it okay and uh, let's go ahead and define our grid search. So grid is my grid search CV. Again, the inputs are my model and uh, the parameter space I would like to uh, include. Number of jobs equals to 16. Again, I mentioned this in the last couple of videos, but it's worth mentioning. I have 32 CPUs. If you're working on a laptop, you may have two or four, depending upon how rich you are, I should say. This doesn't mean I'm rich. Someone was throwing a workstation out three years ago that he or she purchased two years prior. Rich person, I begged to get this workstation, so I have it. It's old, but it works. <laughs> it's got a couple of GPUs, uh, old GPUs, but they work, okay? 
So, uh, uh, and out of those 32, my number of jobs equals to 16. I'm going to use only 16 of them. And the cross-validation, I'm using three-fold cross-validation. You can change it to five if you want. Okay, so this is the description of my grid. And now I just need to fit it to what? To my X grid and Y grid, right? So our X values, we have 6,000, Y 6,000 values. So let's go ahead and fit this. This may take a few, uh, uh, a while. First of all, let's fire up this so we can see the action. <laughs> Okay, it's always nice to see all of these going on. So you can see how things are actually working. So you can see how it's uh, uh, it's using whatever my definition of 16 is. All of these are fired up. It's actually assigning, you know, 50% of the threats over there. And once it's done, let's have a quick look at the results. Okay, let me pause the video. Uh, it, this may take a couple of minutes. Oh, actually, it's done. It, this is the advantage of having 16 CPUs, man. I'm telling you, I tried this on my laptop with uh, a couple of uh, couple of these and it took forever and I killed it. And now I fired up my desktop. It gives up too much heat, but it's about, uh, you can, I don't know if you can see, I don't think you can see outside. It's uh, pretty cold in Northern California, almost like 34 degrees right now. Well, in Fahrenheit, very close to freezing. Okay, let's get back. Let's focus. Okay, so once you do this, the grid result stores a whole bunch of stuff. It stores best score, best parameters, uh, CV, cross-validation results that you can unpack. So let's unpack one at a time. So let's just look at the uh, best score and best parameters. So after all of that, let's expand this so it makes it easy. So the best cross-validation score that we got is 92.6833% and using an activation function of ReLU, and initial weights uh, using uh, initialization of weights using HE underscore uniform and using Adam Optimum. These are all my favorites. When I'm actually putting together a model, I don't know any better. I always use ReLU as activation. I use HE uniform and then I use Adam. That's it. Adam is adaptive, uh, you know, when it comes to loss, uh, 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 learning rates. Sorry. Okay. So that is it. And if you want to look at all the other details, how it performed with everything else, let's run these lines of code and expand this so you can see everything here. So you can see starting 11%, this is 48% using Softmax and Uniform and Adam. So again, you can study it at your own pace on your own problem. So in the next video, let's actually continue this using the same example, except let's do four, uh, five different parameters, batch size, epochs, and a whole bunch. Uh, and then and then have a quick look because uh, there I don't think you need to any anyway, anyway I'll, I'll save that for the next tutorial it's going to be very similar but please watch it because you may learn something something new over there and if you have great computing resources especially on Google Colab you can actually throw a bunch of these and uh, for paid Google Colab for the free one you get only two CPUs if I'm right and this is not even using GPU so it's not going to buy you much okay anyway let's meet in the next video until then please go ahead and subscribe to this channel thank you